I'm far beyond my winning formula. Mine is always like getting it right, being like uh, analytical, all that, and it's so constraining. So I'm like, what do I say sometimes? I'm like, oh, who cares? So I'm being with you, and you have a choice in the moment that's constraining. And you can create a whole new way of being. Okay. You guys get that? Yeah. yeah. And this is really the beauty of this distinction of this work. Because people who haven't done a landmark form, they don't even know this. They're always going to be hard working, hard working, hard working until they die. Mm -hmm. and they're six feet under. Oh, he kids it. Yeah, the, the people throw dirt on them and go to dinner. Right? So what way of being can you create, for example, like right now? Because most of the time you guys were all interacting with each other with our winning formulas. Okay, and we lack my body to begin with. working so hard trying to get an answer right now it's just just being here and looking at his eyes and that should be enough. And what way of being would you call that? Balance. I'll say you guys <laughs> balance, serene. Not balance, but serene. You may be okay. Being serene. Mm -hmm. Anything else? More playful. <laughs> People who describe me as that as a funny thing, but I, I'm not being. So even in my silliness, I'm working hard. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you have the ability, right, to bring forth the possibility of possibility. Okay. The possibility of a whole new way of being. Right. You're demonstrating that right now. So what's possible for you right now? that tension it can be physical or emotional and say how about we let it go yeah and if there's nothing in the way what's there um, what no it's, it's my own programming thinking meaning <laughs> losing formula to be called <laughs> That's a winning for you right there. You see what you just did? You got uncomfortable. And I made a joke. And you made a joke. Yeah. But you've got humor as a winning formula. Mm -hmm. It works for you. Get you off the hook. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. The first couple of seminars I was leading, I had no idea that funny humor was my winning formula. Mm -hmm. And you know, I would say things like, and it was funny. But people wouldn't be coming back to the seminar because I wasn't making a difference. I was being, trying to produce results out of a winning formula. All about looking good, too. And you guys, you, you admit, get, being funny gets you off the hook, yeah? Yeah. Yeah. So you gotta catch it in the moment, create newly. So you were right there and you were serene and peaceful. Point you to that moment by moment. Well, that's from your head. That was generated from your head. Or look out in life. This is where life's happening. Mm -hmm. There it is again. <laughs> 
And he's like, no, you can dance. That'd be some. You're, you're working hard right now. You gotta entertain I them. Cannot, I cannot become a robot either, right? So what's possible now? That's what's possible when you distinguish winning from love. Great work. Welcome. Okay, I got time for another person, okay? What have you seen about your own winning formulas in your own life? Yep, Javad. And how are you an autopilot? Machine automatic. <coughs> so I don't know my brain part of this. I have no idea. Okay. All right. So. I mean, I have an idea because, but I think it's over a sign of a time, not a, an incident that I can think of. Okay. That's what I feel. So, what would you say your three strengths are in your personality? Strengths. Um, Hardworking, committed, uh, selfless. Okay, and that's what people who know you would say that. Yeah. They would say the same thing. Okay, so let's distinguish one of them. You ready? Yeah, let's try it. <laughs> so, what, how old were you when? Um... So, so I have an idea, but I don't know because again, I've been trying to figure this out over the past few months, and I really don't have a your distinction as to what it is. But I came to the States in 1987, I was seven years old, and and I was in first grade or something, and then... You went on the microphone. Oh, I was in first grade. And then, you know, we came as immigrants to, to the States, and, and I guess there was a time where I didn't go to school, and I went back, back to my country. Uh, I was in second grade, and then I came back here, so I was skipping school a lot. And so it turns out when I came back here to the States, um, I was like nine years old. And so two years later, I took this exam and it, it told me that I went in fifth grade, so I skipped like almost like two and a half grades. So I, I just felt like I was not in the right, I mean, I didn't realize that time, but I was way younger than everybody else. I was the youngest person in my class like throughout my school years. And I'm, I'm tall, but I was like really small back then, so. So like, I really look small. Uh, Something's really wrong. Right. So, so to me, like I feel like my whole life as a child, from like seven to high school, I felt like, like I, in the seventh grade, I was this tall. So then I thought that was good. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, but I felt like I didn't belong because uh, and I would make friends with kids that were you know, one or two grades because that's where I could relate to them. They were like my age and so in, in my in all my classes I felt like I was a little baby and like I just I had no voice. I, I lost my I guess self-expression. And so I feel like that's what happened. I don't know. Okay, I got it. So when you um you had the experience of not belonging, is that right? Yeah, because I was not the right age. Okay, and how old were you? So, I was always like two years younger than everybody else in my class. Uh, no, an hour, an hour, a year and a half or two years. I'm talking about the age you were. Oh, um, in fifth grade I was nine. Okay. So. All right. Does that, does that some issue at all? Okay. I'll make sure. Um, all right, so you are nine? Nine. Okay. And either we could want to, we want to distinguish something, okay? Is either you're something's wrong here or I don't belong. I don't belong is a little bit older. 
Okay. So something's wrong here is usually in the childhood at nine or below. Okay. Okay, so between seven to nine, I was bouncing around from one side of the road to the other. Okay, so let's just get this, let's get this on the court. So you, there was there was a, there was a there was an experience. You may have done a couple different things, but you want to look at get on the court and look at like okay, what was the when the first time that I really experienced something's wrong here? Was it when you someone told you you need to go back to where, where, where did you need to go? Well, I'm I'm from Pakistan. I was born there. Okay. But, and so when when we came here, because everything was different, you know, coming from a third world country to mm -hmm. So there was a lot of transition. Um, being immigrants, I guess we didn't have a lot of money. So you know, we had the family obviously was doing odd jobs and odd things to survive. And obviously, I was just I'm the youngest of my five siblings. So my siblings were all older by 11 years. The next one is 11 years older. So I'm the baby of the family. And uh, my, my father stayed back, and my mom was going back and forth. So I, I'm just trying to understand because like, as a as an nine-year-old kid, I was waking up, making my own breakfast, walking to school, and doing things like that, where I guess a lot of kids didn't do that. In Pakistan, what, what did you do at that age before you moved? Um, I was in I was going to school, and I was taking a bus to school, you know, mom and my parents were there. So you moved to the United States, and then you, there's, it happened before you started packing lunch and all that. It's like. Someone said something to you. It could have been a parent. It could have been. What you want to look? Okay. I, I, that's what I'm looking for. I just don't find it. But I, I find I feel like it happened over time. No. It happened in a moment. Moment. I mean. Uh, it was like this before, okay, before everything's like, like I worked with Paula, it's like everything's normal. There's no experience, there's no break in being, life is just happening and it's, it's nothing's wrong, you know, you're playing, whatever, and then boom, something happens and then you're not the same. So It's not bad either, but it just, it happens that way, it's like, oh, something's wrong here, I've got to create I this. Mean, I don't think it's, it's the fact that I came here because I remember my mom told me I had a suitcase packed for like a year, like a little bag that I, I was excited to come here. And even though I lost all my friends, um, I didn't feel sad about it. Just, I came here, we had family here, and my cousins and then my, you know, my uncles and aunts, so I, I didn't feel like I was missing anything. Like, you know, sometimes you feel like you leave one life and come to another. Yeah, but what I'm asking specifically is there was a moment when you experienced something and you said, okay, you were making you know, lunch, you were different than other kids. There was a moment you realized that. Yeah, I guess if I had, if I had to pick a moment, it's when my mom went back to me with my dad, I was a little kid, and I guess I felt alone. Um, my brothers were taking care of me. Um, and how were you? So you were nine. Nine and ten, between nine and ten. Okay. So what, what was said in the moment? Your mom was there, interacting, not interacting. What some or your brother said something? I don't remember. I don't know. No one said anything. I just I'm trying to think of like for me what I felt like. Okay, maybe I some I don't belong in the sense that like I'm not like I'm different than all the other. Or, uh, I always felt that was youngest. Okay, all right, we'll stick to that. Okay, so you don't belong, you're different. And in that moment, there's a way of being that you became so that you could compensate for being different. And I think that has to do with my, I guess I became very shy. And then therefore, my self expression and you know, all that kind of. Yeah, like right now, right? Yeah, I guess. Yeah, this is your winning formula right now. I guess, yeah. Yeah. So, shy is the yeah, anti way of being. It's like reserved. Reserved. Quiet, observant. Quiet, observant, yeah. 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 Because in that moment, 
you you had a view about something, something happened, like you didn't want to disrupt something. Mm -hmm. I just didn't want to, I didn't want to be put in the center stage, like, hey, like, look at you, like, you're not young or weird, I don't know. Like, I just wanted to stay in the wrong corner, stay in the wrong lane, because I didn't want to bring attention to myself, because I thought I was too kind of, I didn't want to because I thought I was not in the right, I guess, age group. And what's that like for you? Um, so from that moment on, that's who you became, like one of your winning formulas. And it produces results for you. So how does being reserved, quiet, shy, produce results for you? Productive side. You're I mean, I'm not very independent. Uh, I can figure out anything I want, pretty much. Yeah, I'm, so that's a different winning formula. I'm talking about being reserved, quiet. So, I guess it turned into some of the rackets I have, because my rackets is like, different than anybody else, where I'm not dominant, I'm more, like, I'm not dominant. Um, I don't mind being wrong in the sake of not paying attention. Like, uh, like, I feel like I don't have to prove anything to myself. I, I feel like I don't have to prove anything to anybody. I feel like I'm good with who I am, but I guess I'm going to go with how I've been my whole life, so I don't know. You know, I had the, I was, I was saying this with like a, a background related to love and appreciation contribution, but I'm gonna say that, be straight here. So you gotta hear this like, nothing's wrong, I'm not attacking him, okay? But I'm really having the experience of being with, if not being able to be with you. And it's not coming from me over here. <coughs> it's like you're so unsure and unclear. And, you know, it's, it's, it's a winning formula, like, it's not like nice, nice to, it's kind of in that realm. I can't pin it. What do you guys, um, could be that. It's something like that, so, so, and, and it produces results, is what I'm saying for you. It has you win. Okay. So I want you to look in your life, okay, look in, on the court in your life. How does this winning formula have you produce results? in some areas, family, relationships, finances. I mean, it has proven results um, for my career to be where I am today because, um, but at the same time, I feel like because my inner voice is not really out of there, like that has, that has hurt me um, internally. Yeah. So. Yeah, there's, there's limitations. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, so what's, what's the definition of a limitation? It's great. You're right. Is it a constraint? Yeah, it's a constraint, for sure. Maybe what else? Back. What's that? Held back. Held back? What's, let's bring up limitation. I want you guys to get, really get limitation. It prevents progress. Yes, it prevents progress. Powerless, Powerless uh-huh. Obstruction. Unable to take a like, stand. Yeah, unable to take a stand. And what's, who's got a, a cell phone? I don't know if somebody does. <laughs> does anybody have a cell phone? I'm kidding. No. Who's got the definition of the limitation? A limiting rule or circumstance or restriction. A restriction. Okay, look up constraint. Limitation or restriction? Okay, I want you to look up limitation. Is there a couple definitions that are there? Limitation again? Yeah. Do you want limitation versus constraint or just limitation? Limitation. All right. Uh, legal means specify period beyond which an action may be defeated or a property right is not to continue. Not that one. The action of limiting something, a condition of limited ability, a defect or failing. Okay. Anything else? The rest is legal. Oh. You're good at reading legal 
point or level beyond which something does not or may not extend or pass? Yes. Say that again. A point or level beyond which something does not or may not extend or pass. Yeah. So a limit, right? It's like a, a point that which you cannot go beyond. Yeah. Capacity, inability, handicap. Well, we're going to take handicap out of there. <laughs> okay. So how does how does this constrain you? This is twenty twenty one. How does this limit you? Okay, we created the world of that, right? Okay. And this is the gold right here. I want to get how it constrains you. Not that it's like bad it constrains you. This is like the good stuff. We're like opening a, an armor going off. Oh, this is like a straight jacket, like we said, right? A suit of armor is your winning formula. We're opening it up and looking like, wow, how does this constrain me? What's possible? Well, how does it constrain you? So, again, going back to my inner voice, not being coming out. Uh, I feel like, see, but this is where I, this is where I question myself a lot because <clears throat> I like to see people around me happy. Like, that makes me happy. So. Sometimes when, when things are happening, whether it's family, whether it's coworkers, whether it's you know like siblings, like I'm the type of person that's gonna always like do what's good for the group because seeing the group happy makes me happy. So so then but then there's I guess if I was to really decide what I want to do, maybe it might be a little bit different. Mm -hmm. Um it doesn't bother me, but I guess over time, those things do like, build up, and, and, and then you start to realize, like, hey, like my inner voice is really in there now, and I can't say those things. So I feel like um, I'm working on bringing my inner voice out a lot more to like really say. You know, what's what's it like for you? What's it really honestly like for you? You're standing there at a party or with your family or or wherever, and. Um, it's like you want to say something, you know, you want them to be happy too, but this, you actually you do things that you do things that you don't want to do, and you don't speak up about it. Because I'm afraid of hurting others and their feelings. Okay, but what's that like for you in that moment where you don't speak out? How does it impact you? What's it like for you? So I stay quiet, and and I do maybe sometimes feel like I should have said something. A lot of times I'm like driving home like. And, and, and I don't. Yeah, and what? Uh, great, great, great. And what's the experience of yourself in, the, in those moments? So there's a little bit of regret, of course, because you wanted to say something, but you didn't think of it, or you couldn't like express yourself at that moment. Like, yeah, I don't want to do this and because of X, Y, and Z. Um, so you live your life, okay? This is a million dollars right here. You live your life with regret. I don't want to say regret. You said it. I'm like, I mean, regretting this. No, but listen, I, I know, but you're, we're, we're kind of bargaining, bar, bar, bargaining now. Sorry. Okay. About that. You're kind of like convincing me it's not so bad, it's like this, and you're not actually saying that in your words, but it's the way of being that you are. But you, you're you actually going out there in life, living, creating regret. So. No, I want you, I want you to use that. Yes, I understand. Okay. But I guess a part of me. No, I don't want to hear the part of you. No, but. Javon, <laughs> look. I mean, there's a logical way of thinking, there's an emotional way of thinking, and I'm very logical. So when it comes to doing things, I feel like I think about what is the right solution to the problem that's not going to affect the, the group. That's fine. That's well, the well here, here's, yeah, okay. So then. So, so what if it affects a group? Because of the people I care about, and if they're hurt, then I'm hurt. You make it mean something we're going to miss a meeting big machine later. Does that get you off the hook? It does, yeah. yeah. And so you're living a, a, a life of regret. Just, it's just that's what it is. Yeah, no, self expression is not there, so therefore, the inner voice is not there, therefore, yeah, there's a lot of regret and things that I should do and I want to do. Yeah. Yeah, so what I'm asking is, what is it like for you every day? I'm a happy person. I enjoy my life, and at the same time, I guess.
yes, it has affected me in my personal life. So you got a choice, you ready? Yeah. You can either continue to be constrained, or you can create and choose a whole new way of being that's accessible every time you get constrained. Yes. So possibility, what would be a possible way of being that you could create? What is do what I want to do. Like, hey, I want to do my own house. Let's move on tomorrow. Okay, well, what's, that? what's a way of being? What's a way of being for you? Would be great. Look out there with them. Pretty much, like say things that I, that I feel and and uh, and live with the consequences, which I've been doing, by the way. Oh yeah. Yes, I have. <laughs> you wouldn't be up here if you. <clears throat> so it's it's awesome, okay? So what would what would a way of being that you create that would inspire you? See, that's very complicated. No, it's not. You've got it a story is. about that. We're gonna do the stories later, but you know, like you require me to like dump my whole life upside down and like go somewhere else. I don't know what dumping your. I'm not asking you to dump your life upside down, but that gets you off the hook. I don't know. Yeah, maybe. It's great. You don't know. It's a start. So you might create the possibility of being unleashed. Unleashed is an interesting word. So what would it look like right now if you were being unleashed? Uh, I can be myself 100% and do whatever I want. But now I know I can because I have kids, family, and I have kind of little work like this. Stop, you gotta stop. <laughs> What would being unleashed look like right now for them? Javad unleashed people. This is Javad and he's unleashed. Yeah. Woo. Yeah. Let's go somewhere after this and party that way. Go <laughs> <laughs> 5 a.m. at least. <laughs> 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 So that's how I'm going to listen to you as an unleashed. Okay. 
And that's how you guys are requesting that you listen to him, listen to him that way. Okay? This is your community. They're supporting you. They're listening to you, Zach. Beautiful. Awesome. Turn to your partner. If we have a partner, and have more people come in. Make sure we all have two, two. So Noah needs a partner. Noah and Alex. <laughs> okay. So you want the person with the longest hair is going first. And I want you to turn to your partner and share what you've seen about your winning formulas in your life. And if you hadn't, I want you to share what you got out of this conversation, these two conversations, okay? Shh. What have you seen about your own winning formulas in your life? Will you share about what have you seen about your own winning formulas in your, in your life and how they've constrained you? And if you haven't seen your winning formulas, I want you to share what you got out of this Paul's interaction and um, Javad's interaction, okay? I'm going to give you two minutes each. Go ahead and give your partner and share. Okay. You share. Gloria, can you go up and share with me? Thank you. Thank you. 